Okay, I'm going to tell you about a new one of our cosmic characters. Uh, its name is Christmas. And Christmas appears to be a little elf, um, about the size of an imp. Imps and elves are about six inches tall. And Christmas is, um, he's got kind of a funny way he talks. It's kind of like, I don't know if I can do it. Christmas. And um, that's his name. And we spell it C-H-R-I-S-M-E-S-S. -S. Okay, now we're not be able to tell you too many more stories about Christmas because uh, when I put the Jamaica hat on, it means um, we want to talk to the Obiman. And the Obiman be the person down in Jamaica. He got lots of pretty women in uh, the Obiman love to make really good drinks at the bar. The Obiman be there making up them drinks at the bar and then dishing out advice. And that's the whole point of a good bartender. If you're going to sit with your bartender is you want to ask your bartender good advice. Well, my bartenders are always way too busy slinging drinks that they never have time to talk to at the bar uh, in the evening. So I'm going to suggest maybe if the bar opens at one o'clock in the afternoon, you go then and see if in the afternoon it's quieter. Uh, but if you find that, uh, try another bar. Keep looking for a bar where you can spend um, 15 minutes with your bartender uh, talking about, um, <clears throat> um, uh, well, um, the wisdom of the bartender. Um, there was on original Star Trek... Uh, an episode where Leonard McCoy, who was the ship's surgeon, uh, and the captain, Captain Kirk, um, well, something was going on, and uh, Kirk was sitting there kind of just not knowing what to ha what's going to happen next, and McCoy arrived with a tray of two alcoholic drinks. Um, maybe they were, well, um, mm, we think like maybe gin and tonic. Two gin and tonics. Uh, so that would be, uh, what kind of gin would they use? Uh, like, a, when was it, 100 or 200 years in the future? They'd still be using good quality gin uh, that the service would use. So if you're in the Navy, uh, you can tell us what kind of gin. Uh, we're looking particularly for... Um, Anyone who drinks gin to put in their ideas. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, because gin has got uh, alcohol and uh, it's got those um, juniper berry flavor in it. It's very white, clear liquid. And then the tonic would be, uh, it has to have quinine in it, which is uh, extracted from the bark of the quinine tree from South America. It was first uh, discovered that uh, uh, quinine is a um, uh, is indicated when someone is exhibiting signs of malaria. So I use this, you know, there's no malaria where I live, but there and but there are mosquitoes and there is winter time. And as we get closer and closer to winter, when I start getting cold right through to the marrow of my bones, which happened for the first time last week, uh, uh, I discovered that if I have got, this is Canada Dry uh, Soda Tonique in French, and in English it's tonic water. So there you have it. Now if you drink this tonic water um, and you're cold, it does seem to help with shivering. One night I remember I was uh, at the Dragon's Den and it was a cold night and uh, I was at the table and my knees were shaking, my whole legs were shaking. It was a full-on cold shiver. And um, so um, it just uh, dawned on me, maybe I should try some tonic water. I did and I stopped shivering. It didn't warm me up, but at least I wasn't shaking like a human being.
Okay, more from Christmas later. Thanks for watching. And uh, today's topic is going to be about time loops and uh, its relationship to karma, uh, the relationship to the Bill Murray movie Groundhog Day, uh, and, um, uh, okay, we're going to finish off with, um, okay, it's going to be from Dr. David R. Hawkins, Transcending the Levels of Consciousness, The Stairway to Enlightenment, and the page that we've been given is The Spiritual Ego. Devotion and dedication sometimes lead to what is best termed overambition, overzealousness, or even fanaticism, which represents an imbalance. A frequent error is to try to force the rise of the Kundalini energy by artificial, ener artificial exercises and practices. The Kundalini automatically rises to its own appropriate level in accord with the energy field of the prevailing level of consciousness. This occurs as a consequence of what one has become and is. To force the spiritual energy by manipulative means can result in serious disorders, imbalances, and even irrational mental states of confusion or delusion. This may result in grandiose states and self-claims to be a prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, or even Jesus Christ, or a messiah. These were observed during the author's years as, as a consultant to many religious and spiritual groups. Some spiritual practices may also lead to altered states of consciousness or auto-suggestive states that are misidentified as spiritual. We want this again. Some spiritual practices may also lead to Altered states of consciousness or auto-suggestive states, auto-suggestive states that are misidentified as spiritual. While mantras and certain rep repetitious practices have some value, depending upon the calibrated level of their truth as well as the intention behind them, they can also become a substitute for the progressive realizations that underlie and substantiate true spiritual advance. My editor's note here is to say, and true spiritual adventures. That's just me. Okay, going back to Dr. Hawkins. The true state is reflected in what one has become rather than what one believes or does the true state is reflected in one in what one has become they go on here dr hawkins says thus occult practices or magical manipulations and gymnastics are better bypassed in favor of true substantial spiritual growth Progress is facilitated by the willingness to surrender ambition to God. Error can be precluded by being alert to the ego's desire to survive by taking over the spiritual processes. And then the next part is the, um, okay, it's the, um, it's very important. And this one is called, called the lure of the cities. S-I-D-D-H-I-S, -D -D the Sanskrit word. Sanskrit is an uh, ancient uh, language from India where they knew all about the cities, the spiritual superpowers. Be like Superman in uh, DC, Comics, DC Comics. 
Yes, with the cities, you too could become supermen. Now, here is the caveat that no one ever tells you, except someone who always tries to give you fair warning of huge spiritual traps. A spiritual trap is a place where you get locked in, perhaps forever, because you are totally buying in to a uh, school of thought forms, a mythology, um, or um, some feeling like you have a savior complex, like the archetype is a savior, which would be like people like to be uh, a fireman. And then there's the uh, interesting contrast with the princess archetype, which is, you know, what a lot of eight-year-old girls go through, you know, when they are getting paid attention by a man. You know, a man is giving them gifts. Maybe it's daddy. Maybe it's their uncle. And uh, the whole idea that uh, still uh, sticks around uh, is um, I'm at some point I must be a princess. Is it true that little gay boys are interested in being princesses? Um, some, absolutely. But some little straight boys also act like princesses. In the gay world, a princess is, um, well... Hmm, a princess, a Madonna, prima donna is the word, prima donna, and it means someone who is, uh, well, you're going to have to figure it out from there, I can go on, and I have to back up, okay, we were talking earlier about the lure of the cities, this is the seduction, seduction, what does it mean, it's, it's an illegal move, it's an illegal spiritual move. It's using a magic spell on you to get you to go uh, and do something that your um, um, right-hand path says is the direct path to God. And this is your left hand. It's your own left hand. Everyone has a right and a left hand. I think Luke Skywalker's, was it his right hand was cut off by a lightsaber whichever hand that was then he got a mechanical hand but whatever hand that was that's still either the right or the left hand and you know if you don't have arms then you have um, a right and a left side unless you are not of a bilateral symmetry in your body then you might need to wear a costume where you have that you might be some other kind of symmetry like um an octopus might be an eight, uh, eight weighed eight, the number eight, eight tentacles, so eight uh, symmetries. Okay, we're going back to the lure of the cities. Okay, here we go. There are many supposedly spiritual techniques and systems that are merchandised and promoted, complete with testimonials and celebrities. The overt commercialization reveals the overall intention, which is to profit rather than promote the actual spiritual evolution of the naive seeker. While some of the techniques certainly have value, they can be obtained free of charge from any integrous textbook on spirituality. Of equal danger are the seduction and proselytization of a variety of cults that are based on glamorization of leaders and, sorry, glamorization of leaders. Um, we call that the cult of personality. Control of followers, well-known brainwashing techniques, financial and sexual expectations, and control over personal lives. All of these calibrate extremely low there is considerable information available about them under cults. These organizations also specialize in the technique of entrapment, seduction, specialness, and the exploitation of innocence and naivete. The spiritual ego sees progress as gain or status rather than a gift and therefore a responsibility. It will even parade pseudo-humility and over-piety and can become and can become quite sanctimonious. It is also impressed by rank, title, and adulation of large numbers of followers, as well as by pompo pompous display, theatrics, and the manipulation of paranormal, 
the manipulation of paranormal phenomena. The peddling of paranormal phenomena is a serious warning as the appeal is obviously to to the ego, which is easily glamorized by parapsychological events such as teleportation, telekinesis, distant viewing, bilocation, levitation, materialization of objects, astral projection, and more, including even the doppelganger phenomenon, or otherwise known as doubling. Last little bit, the desire for a city or spiritual superpower for its own sake is a warning that the spiritual ego is seeking specialness. There you have it, an excerpt from Transcending the Levels of Consciousness, The Stairway to Enlightenment by David R. Hawkins, MD, PhD, and uh, I think he's still listed on the website quackwatch.com. But don't um, let that fool you. Dr. Hawkins was also uh, closely associated with Dr. Li Linus Pauling, who was given a Nobel Prize by the Illuminati. Dr. Hawkins himself was um, anointed king by um, someone I know, and um, later on uh, the ideas had to go.